Hey, it looks like butt, right? Hey, what's up everyone? Warm welcome back. This video brought to you by Pock Sports, <clears throat> makers of incredible athletic gear for mountain bikers, skiers, etc. Just kidding, it's not sponsored by Pock, but the alternative is you gotta look at Crazy Hair Friday. So I figured it's easier to top it up with my cool purple, super purple Pock Sports hat, trucker hat, that is. Anyway, what's up everyone? Warm welcome back. Another day, another show. Back from Europe. Had a great time. Visited my mom. And also visited Falker and Annette at Einstein Audio in Bochum, which went really nice. Uh, saw some cool updates that they have planned for this year and beyond. And can't wait to talk to you guys about that at some point in the future. But today's episode is all about part five in my series of interviews with Arian Janssen. Great electronics guru, engineer, designer, multiple patents to his name. And today we're going to be talking about tape machines, the be-all, end-all to any audiophile, whoever wants to be an audiophile. And the crowning achievement of every audiophile's collection, of course, are the real, the real tapes that they have in their possession, or maybe not. But Arian has cooked up a really, really cool reel-to-reel uh, -reel machine uh, which actually is now updated to Mark II status. So it's the ATR-10 Mark II. And he's going to tell us all about it and uh, hopefully find out what's going on, what's cooking. Check it out. Thanks for tuning in. I'll drop a link below so you guys can check out his website as well and learn more or catch up on some of the other episodes that I did with him. And, of course, get uh, more info about his amazing tape machines and this SHI process, uh, the Sonic graph or excuse me sonographic blah, 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 blah. sonorous holographic imaging process that creates these incredible quasi surround sound stereo images uh, playback on tape machines anyway without further ado check it out thanks for tuning in and we'll see you guys soon ciao so yes the uh, ATR 10 mark II has uh, just been released in, uh, in 2023 uh, it's the Mark II because the, the original ATR-10 I released in 2011, so it's 12 years uh, later and there were a lot of components not uh, 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 available anymore. Uh, so I decided to redesign the whole machine. But I recognize uh, uh, the look of the machine. Uh, and it's I know that the ATR-10 Mark I used the PR-99 uh, Revox uh, as a base. Yes. The new one uses uh, either the PR99 or the B77. Yes, I, I, I decided to stay basically at the uh, uh, the basis of the, the PR99 B77 because actually the PR99 machine, yeah. is, PR99 is a uh, continuation of the B77. B77 yeah. Um, the interesting thing of the, the, the Revox machines in general is that they are really uh, poor man's stoolers, if I can say it like that, because they use exactly the, uh, the same type of mechanical transports with the die-cast chassis, the AC motors, you will see exactly the same, same type of construction and same type of motors in the Studer AA10, for instance, which was a very high-end uh, recording machine in the days. Okay. So it's it's extremely well proven, and I decided since uh, it's still uh, available and the motors, uh, even if they're not new, they're fully passive and you can change the, the bearings out, that they, they can start life all From over again, okay. basically. Wow. So it's it, it was a, a perfect starting point with mechanical parts that have uh, have a decades of uh, experience of yeah. they, they, it yeah. stood the test of time so to speak yeah, yeah. so I, and it's I, all metal and it's all massively i mean you can you know if you take apart the front fascia uh you can see that it's it's the whole thing is built like a tank yeah but that's not where where sonorous begins basically you essentially what strip the entire deck yeah, I, I decided uh, already at, uh, at uh, Mr. Mark 1, but Mar Mark 2, I, uh, I took that basically a piece further by reducing further any of the, the studio parts in it, is to use only those critical mechanical components mm -hmm. and 
then design everything around it from motor drivers to power supplies to audio electronics uh, wow. to control uh, circuitries and everything. Just design it completely from scratch so that you uh, essentially have a completely newly designed and newly built machine. Wow. Even though some of the mechanical Part. components are Studer design. Talk about recycling. That's like a whole new level of recycling area. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That, so basically, there is almost nothing from Revox left in that machine. Yeah, there are, there are no electronics basically left in it. It's, uh, it's all totally new designs. I basically said, okay, we, we have these very good motors. We have the hats uh, and Capstan, some, of, so, yeah. some of, the, of, of the mechanical parts that have proven to be extremely well designed. Let's not try to uh, reinvent, reinvent the wheel. The wheel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably cannot do it as well as uh, when it was done back in the time. So I use that. So again, everything else, I'm going to start from scratch. I'm not going to uh, worry about how Studio Revox uh, uh, made the whole thing work together, those motors and everything. We're going to start from scratch, new wow. insights, uh, new components, new circuit designs. Again, I'm from... Uh, as a background, power electronics, so motor drivers, power supplies is obviously uh, my uh, my Wheel specialty. House, yeah. mm. And then the, uh, the the totally new designed audio circuits. Mm -hmm. And and back back in 2011 when I did the Mark One, I, I decided to go with a tube playback. And that was so well received, basically, that for the Mark Two, I decided not to uh, to mess with a good thing. And stay as the with the, the tube playback, but put some substantial improvements in uh, the performance of that uh, that play uh, tube playback uh, system. Mm -hmm. uh, interestingly enough, the 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 some of the things that I notice uh, in both the ATR ten Mark One and the Mark Two is that because you were able to. Uh, create or or well yeah create your new uh, motor uh, uh, electronics, uh, you know, the logic behind it, how they operate, et cetera, et cetera. You were able to actually add some features to the machine that the machine originally did not have. Like, for example, incredible fat, incredibly fast wind and rewind speeds, uh, incredibly efficient braking, um, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, the... Again, like I said, when I started off with the design of it, I was only interested in the motors and some of the mechanical components. I had no interest on how Revox made their machine work, basically. Mm -hmm. I wanted to uh, make a machine that basically has uh, all the professional features as well. So unlike the PR99, the, the ATR10 has uh, regulated tape tension. It has uh, motor ex uh, assisted braking, and again with the with the, the motor drivers, basically you can run the the motors much more powerful, mm -hmm. and you have a much better control over over what happens. So I basically use the AA10 as a f from a mechanical reference point of view. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that the tape running through the uh, ATR10 uh, and the ATR10 Mark II alike basically mm -hmm. would have the same tape handling and st uh, tape stability that a Studer AA10 would do. Wow! So that that was my target because if say if I, if I meet that, and for all modern tapes, uh, you get the best possible tape transport uh, quality. Incredible. And I mean, the only real reason why you would have a uh, Studer A80s and uh, A20s is that they have an absolute minimum wear on the tape. Okay. So if you uh, are going to do a new uh, mastering of a Beatles tape, I would not suggest to use an ATR 10 Mark II to play that Beatles tape back, but please use a uh, Studer A80 or an uh, A820, A A and yeah. also do not use an Ampex machine, for instance. Interesting. Okay. So it's really those two 
machines the were. Machines, that's where you want to run your it, your original Beatles master tape over. Yeah. Is that all the 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 funny little gizmos that I see? The yes. tensioners and all, all the tensioners, all the basically the the a the a eighty for instance. The only friction uh, that the tape sees is the surface of the heads. Nothing else. Really? Yeah. Not uh, and if if it's not in playback mode. There is no uh, sliding surfaces. It's all rolling in that way. Wow. Case. And as soon as the machine is on, basically the tape tension comes up uh, and it stays that way. Wow. So it has the highest level of, uh, of uh, tape treatment for wow. sensitive stuff. No kidding. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. But for what we do with the modern tape uh, formula yeah. and then the, the, the modern tape uh, copies, there is no need. There's no benefits in in. in Having in such play, a in, yeah in playback in playback performance there is no benefit in running it over a transport like that yeah interesting the only thing you can say well there is a little bit more uh, wear on the machine like that of the tape yes it is which may be noticeable after you play it back five hundred times yeah but in reality yeah that is it's not a benefit ben yeah um, do not be mistaken by the way that even a Studer A80 or an A820 uh, exhibits a electrical fault when you're playing something like that. It may destroy that part of the tape because they are very powerful motors. Yep. Interesting. So it's yep. it's uh, there are a, a lot of benefits to use a simpler machine, smaller machine uh, also, yeah. which is uh, very half important. the size. Yeah. Yeah. And which is all built up on modern electronics. So you do not have stuff going out all the time because it's already on, on borrowed time. Yeah, yeah. So Plus, there's spare parts available, obviously, in case something goes wrong. The motors, you said you can replace the bearings on them, etc. Yes. So it's it's all ready, readily available. Readily and available, that. and again, yeah. all the uh, electronic components are obviously yeah. uh, in, in, uh, in current production. They're modern, they, yeah. they start their life basically yeah. when you buy the machine. So yeah. uh, the, the reliability of the ATR-10 has been proven to be very good in the field because again, they've been there for about 12 years now. Um, and there has been virtually no, uh, no field failures. Yeah. Uh, the only field failures I really have had is the, uh, or were the tubes in the beginning mm -hmm. because I was using uh, JJ tubes which sounded good and performing good, but they had their reliability was uh, absolutely uh, unacceptable. Mm -hmm. Tried a few other kind of more modern brands like the Electro Harmonics and so, same thing. So I ended up to say, okay, the ATR-10 can only have new old stock uh, Philips uh, mm. tubes. Okay. Made in, the, made in the 60s and they, uh, once, once they passed their uh, uh, infant mortality testing, which I always do. I always run uh, about uh, 200 uh, tube hours and about 50 tape hours before a machine is uh, shipped. Mm -hmm. They basically never break down. I don't think I've ever had a breakdown, so mm -hmm. a failure and uh, a sporadic failure of a tube. Mm -hmm. And I've never had an, uh, one wear out either. Mm -hmm. So they no. they tend to last 10 to 20,000 hours basically, which wow. is yeah. Plenty uh, of time. Plenty of time, yeah. So n nothing to worry about in the, yeah. in the next uh, 10 years <laughs> you buy it that there is uh, tube replacement yeah. required or so. Great.